Hello. In this lecture, we are going to experiment with the HTTP header injection attack. In cross-site scripting, we injected data into the contents of the HTTP response. Now we are going to do more or less the same, but instead of in injecting in the content, we are going to inject in the HTTP response headers. So let's go to the application, which is called the test page. So if you go to the target machine console, you can see the URL there. It's the IP is the same as the others, just it runs on port 8000. So let's load that. Port 8000. And make sure that burp is also running. Yes, it's running, it's intercepting as well. So you could see that it's a pretty simple test page. If we go to burp, we can go to history and uh, and here is the request, nothing interesting. Here's the response, also pretty simple, just a few headers and, uh, and then a little HTML. So this is a pretty simple page. It doesn't really do anything. It mostly just proves that the server is running. But if you look closer in the response, you could see that there is a there is an unusual HTTP header there, this uh, request path. This, this kind of implies that the path what, that was requested is repeated here. Let's try that send it to the repeater and uh, first just repeat the request it's the same and uh, let's see whether that's really the path i will say test and go and yeah so basically whatever your path is in the request that will be mirrored back as the request path header now that we understand what the what it does we can try to do some kind of manipulation when we are talking about header injection, what we want to do is to inject a new line and a carriage return character in the header. If the application allows that, then we can add new headers to the response. So I said the carriage return and new line. In some programming languages that's usually called backslash r and backslash n, uh, that's the carriage return and then the new line. Of course, these are non-printable characters, so we cannot just cannot just write it uh, here, and we also cannot use these forms. But what we can do, we can use the uh, URL encoded version of these characters. Uh, URL encoding is always starts with the percent, and then the uh, ASCII number of the of the character in hexa, which will be zero D for carriage return, and zero A for new line and then we just add some text after that to see what happens so let's send the request and it looks pretty good so what you see is exactly what we wanted after the string tech test the carriage return and the new line was left in the header which was then interpreted as a carriage return and new line and basically the rest of the path was jammed down one line and with that creating a new header element. Now xxxxx is not really a header, so we could use that for something else. We could use this in various ways. For instance, we could use this vulnerability to, to set a new cookie. Uh, that could be pretty useful. Since this test page runs on the same server as the voice of the emperor, we could create an Encore CMS cookie, which was the session cookie for that application, and that might be useful. To do that, we have to create a new header called a set cookie. So here, instead of the xxxxx, we create a header called set cookie colon, and uh, 
we are not gonna use space here right now because it might mess up the request so I will just do uncore CMS this is the name of the cookie what we want to set and then as a value you could use anything I will use the string uh, your all your apps belong to us all right let's try what happens now send the request and that looks really good so basically now with the header injection we were able to create a good looking set set cookie header with the appropriate cookie value so it looks very nice but let's see how that works in the browser so I will just do right click and copy URL and go back to the browser. We can prove first that that we don't have a cookie right now. I will then submit this URL. And as you can immediately see, a new cookie was set, Anchor CMS, all your apps belong to us. And if I would reload just the normal page without injection and look at this in burp, we could see that first we did the injection, there is no cookies in the request, then came the set cookie, and then when I reloaded the page in the request, the cookie was actually really used. So we could create an active cookie for this IP address. And now we can go to back to the browser and load our Voice of the Emperor application. It loads and then check the storage. And you could see that the attacker's cookie is still used again check in the burp here yes the cookie is in use and all requests have our cookie in it now you might wonder why this is good for us that we created a cookie hopefully you remember that the voice of the emperor application is vulnerable to session fixation. When we dealt with session fixation, we said that the attacker needs to set the cookie somehow, either by physically changing it on the user's computer or to find another vulnerability that he can use to set this cookie. Now, this is exactly that kind of vulnerability. So the attack scenario would be that the attacker creates this URL uh, tricks the user to load it. When the user loads it, it will create an Encore CMS cookie in his uh, browser. And then the user comes for any reason to the voice of the Emperor application and the attacker's cookie will be used. When the user goes to the admin page and actually logs in, we could still confirm here that we are still using the attacker's cookie. So he logs in as admin, long live the emperor. I hope I wrote it correctly. And yes, and because the application is vulnerable to session fixation, the attacker's cookie will be used for the administrative session as well. So basically using this cookie, what the attacker already, do already knows, he can load it in any other browser and connect to the admin panel and he will access uh, he will get access to the administration pages with the user rights of the admin because basically he is hijacking the admin's session this example shows again that such innocent bugs can be combined to create a critical attack for instance even even such a, a simple site as this test page which literally doesn't do anything uh, can be useful in some attacks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the header injection can be exploited in various ways. 
it could be also exploited to do uh, cross-site scripting. So as an exercise, you could try to create a cross-site scripting attack using this header injection. Basically what you wanna reach is by injecting in the header, basically what you wanna do is to use the malicious URL to somehow manipulate the content of the HTML page because then you can inject HTML or, or even JavaScript um, and then you have a cross-site scripting. It can be done, so try it, spend some time with it and when you're finished, then we will see each other in the next section. Uh, thanks for watching and bye.